Hello everyone, this is Bob Souza speaking from historic Main Street in Somerset Village. SATV Access Channel 9 is very honored today to have in studio one of our favorite sons of Somerset who has made it huge outside of the area, returning after 22 years from the glory days at Somerset. I welcome in studio Dave Macedo, head coach of men's basketball at Virginia Wesleyan College in Norfolk, Virginia. Dave, welcome back to Somerset. Thanks, Bob. Appreciate it, Mr. Souza. Well, it's a pleasure to have you. I want to pay tribute and heartfelt thanks to three ladies who were responsible for allowing you to be with us today, who arranged the vacation <laughs> and the room and board for you on vacation. Your lovely mother-in-law, Mrs. Linda uh, Cavallo, and of course, her daughter and your wife, Kristen Cavallo, uh, who graduated Somerset High in 1992, and your Spanish teacher, the elegant and erudite Miss Patricia Medeiros, who taught you Spanish at Somerset and was a great fan and backer of yours and close friend of both your mom, Kristen, and sister-in-law, Beth. So I thank those ladies again for making it possible for you to be with us. And also your three children, who don't mind your being away from them <laughs> briefly this morning. Nolan, age six, Lillian, age four, and Declan, age two. Probably miss you very much, but we promise to get you back there soon. I had the opportunity to speak with Nolan briefly when I called home to arrange your visit. He picked up and answered, and his phone etiquette was impeccable. <laughs> I appreciate that. Well, a great young, young man. Now, on your side of the family, a former student of mine, class of 1966, your mom, the vicious redhead going way back, and that would be Maureen uh, Lennon mm -hmm. and her twin sister Kathleen Lennon. They were class of 66, and uh, they were, let's see, in my class, world history in 1964. So they were very uh, solid students for me, and uh, you know, it was a pleasure to have them. And I wish to convey uh, my very best to the twins who have now added a few years, as we all have. <laughs> also, your dad, a special thanks to your dad, Mike Macedo, great athlete at Case High School, playing for the great Jack McCarthy, two sports, running back, linebacker in football, and also solid hitting outfielder in baseball. He hooked up against the Blue Raiders of Somerset, coached by the legendary Jim Sullivan, the late great Jim Sullivan, who also uh, coached the football, great Thanksgiving Day battles with Case, and of course the home-and-home uh, -home series in baseball for many, many years. Jack McCarthy, Providence College, class of 53, Jim Sullivan, class of Providence College, 51. So the Dominican uh, philosophy and background <laughs> pervaded uh, uh, when Somerset played case. They were two high-class gentlemen who understood the role of uh, athletics and academics at the high school level. They were fantastic. David, we're going to go back to your career at Somerset High School, uh, class of 1991 graduate, also Hall of Fame inductee in the year 2002. Those were both uh, outstanding years for you, the graduation, senior year, and of course, the Hall of Fame. Just uh, stretching to the Hall of Fame, what did it feel like in 2002 to be recognized by your alma mater? Well, it felt great. I, I was able to have most of my family there with us, um, some of my former coaches, you know, just people that have played, a, I want to say, a huge role in my development as a person, uh, as a player, and, and uh, just as a man. And, you know, it's, it's those people that, you know, I will forever be thankful for and just very lucky to have them in my lives and, you know, shape my development. And, you know, 
it's, it's something that has brought me a lifetime full of memories. So, uh, you know, it was a nice day. And uh, in that situation, you were already a head coach at Virginia Wesleyan in 202 when you, uh, when you were inducted into the Somerset Hall of Fame. In 1991, we have a visual. You played uh, point guard, very solid all-star performer for a great coach, great uh, vice principal, Mr. Leonard Alves. Len Alves was your coach in basketball, and you played four years for him, I believe, in high school. Yeah, yeah had an outstanding career. In 1991, your team uh, really was outstanding. Could you relate some of the uh, teammates to us? Sure. I mean, uh, 1991 was a special year for all of us. It's a it's your senior year, you, and you're out to make your senior year one to remember. And it was something that uh, my teammates and I, uh, you know, put forth a lot of effort for. We had a great summer leading into our senior year. And, uh, you know, Jimmy Kaloran, Chad Bank, um, Timmy Arruda, um, you know, some of Freddie Polk, Danny Turner, some of those guys in those teams were just anchors of that team and, and did an outstanding job. And I think uh, the thing that was nice was the chemistry, and we were all about the team. and. So we just made it a year to remember, and Coach Alves really let us, you know, just play our game and, and have fun doing it. Uh, we, we were able to go out on a high note. We came up a little short of our goal, but I think we won a couple of playoff games at home that year, and uh, it's just a lot of fun. Right. I think the team that beat you was New Bedford. That's right. Had three times as many students at Somerset. <laughs> well, you know, I know a lot of those guys. Um, and uh, I think it was, I, I was probably responsible for missing a lot of free throws that game. So that's something that didn't sit well with me. And those guys, you know, they, uh, they reminded me of that. And uh, to this day, uh, they, got, they one-upped us. And they're, they're good kids. And, you know, it was a good rivalry. Athletes never forget. No, they don't. No, oh, they don't. that's terrific. We played a lot of AAU ball with those guys. So. Oh, I see. Yeah, that was, that's great. Another uh, uh, sport activity for you was baseball played uh, first base and also pitching for mm -hmm. the Blue Raiders and played for two Hall of Fame, Somerset Athletic Hall of Fame coaches, uh, the late great Jim Sullivan's final year, 1990, right. was your junior year, you played for him. Yeah, I mean, Coach Sullivan was, uh, you know, one of the best that we've ever had. Um, you know, I think uh, he, he kind of set the standard. He, he uh, you know, it was left his legacy on, on Somerset baseball. And then Coach Thomas really just carried that torch over into a, a new era. And I was fortunate to play for both of them. Two very different styles, I can tell you that. Coach Sullivan, um, you know, he lets you know some things. And he doesn't always let you know the, the easiest or the nicest way. And then Coach Thomas had a, has a, a good way about him and kind of, um, you know, let you be yourself. Um, and, and they both brought so many different things to the table. It was nice to be, be able to play for both of them. And just, uh, you know, achieve success. We had so many good players, uh, so many great teammates. And, you know, that's uh, something we're very proud of. And I, and I know I, I will always remember those days. Well, that's very kind of you. Good, uh, fond memories. Each uh, won a state championship in baseball. Coach Sullivan, 1979, state champ in baseball. Sure. Larry Thomas, 2006, state champion in baseball. Quite an achievement. And, of course, Larry, I believe, coached for 17 years after uh, Jim retired. Right. Jim was 30 years total, and Larry 17 more. Larry and I were Jim's junior varsity coaches the 30 years that he coached. I was the first 15, Larry the second 15. So it was a great honor, A, to have been schooled and honed by Jim, and also have Larry as a player and then see the success which he had as a uh, baseball coach. Uh, great, great coaches. Somerset was very fortunate. Absolutely. And those guys kind of set the standard and, you know, impeccable integrity, um, knowledge of the game, you know, and just a very disciplined approach to everything they did and, and just knew the game in and out. I mean, uh, you know, and that's kind of what, what Somerset was known for. I remember those days where, where the baseball program kind of was a flagship sport on the men's side of things. And, you know, it was just, uh, you know, it was great to be part of. Well, we're going to go to a different era now. If we say goodbye to Somerset, <laughs> 1991, we're going to head to Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, and Wilkes University. 
and you were a graduate of that school in what, 1996? Six. So you were there from 92 to 96, and bachelor's, Bachelor of Arts degree there in history. Mm -hmm. Very, very strong wow. academic tradition. So your degree is very strong. Then 1998, master's degree, master of science degree in teaching strategies. Um, yeah, it was a master's of science in education and a lot to do with teaching strategies. Right. And so much so that you were qualified in secondary education, which could be high school teaching or even college teaching. Mm -hmm. That's how strong those uh, degrees were. Now, Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, uh, also had a Somerset connection because from the class of 1959, your uncle, Michael Lennon, right. was a professor there and administrator for many years. Mike and I took Latin II together with the late, great Jack <laughs> Kenevy at Somerset High School. Mike graduated in 59. He had Mr. Kenevy as a sophomore. I graduated in 57. I took Latin as a senior. So we were in the same class, only 10 of us. And in Mike's row, that two Hall of Famers uh, from the class of 59, the late, great Mike Salmon, who held a scoring record in basketball many, many years at the high school, also got a scholarship to the University of Rhode Island. Right. And he was a great player. Tragically died uh, running cross country at age 36, massive heart attack, but a great, great uh, athlete at Somerset, especially basketball. And Beverly DeMarco uh, set the tone for women's athletics. She was right. great, great. Uh, uh, athlete in all the sports and uh, graduate in 1959 and your uncle Mike was in the same row with those people and I was fortunate to be able to be there uh, trying to get my two years of a language in in order <laughs> to go to college because things were different in the 50s so Jack and Evie insisted I take Latin as a junior, Latin 1, Latin 2 as a uh, senior and there I was with Mike Lennon, who later became a very prominent English professor and author. Could you comment a little sure. bit about yeah, Uncle Mike? Sure, um, yeah. My Uncle Mike is one of the finest people you know, I know. He's, he's touched my life. Um, you know, uh, I'm responsible. He, he, he was a big part of me going to Wilkes University. He had hired a new basketball coach at that time. He had just become the vice president for academic affairs uh, at Wilkes University and uh, kind of started my recruitment all over again at Wilkes University and kind of took a visit down there, loved the coach, and, and just said, that's where I'm going. And uh, just everything took off from there. It really kind of set the stage for, for my passion for coaching. And uh, I think he's just touched so many lives, whether it's been in the classroom, um, you know, just people he encounters. He's just, you know, somebody who uh, I hold in the highest regard. Uh, he's a... Uh, you know, an English professor. He still does it to this day, part time. He lives in Westport, Mass., and he just authored one of his, his masterpieces. Uh, I want to say uh, his Norman Mailer's latest book, um, which uh, you know should be very successful, and it's something that I know he's very proud of, as we all are. Uh, but just, just uh, you know, great, great people, great memories, and and you know, Wilkes University has been real good to me. Well, you please uh, convey my best to him. I will. We'll uh, send him a tape of your performance right. and, here and, today. And, you know, he always said to me, he said, you know, as good as I could get, I could never beat Mike Salmon. And, and that's, that was his words. Mike Salmon was, uh, you know, the best player that he had ever seen, and he, he reminded me, and he reminds me to this day. Well, they're in the same role. That's right. And, I, and that's I understand. Amazing. His loyalties, I understand. That's amazing. Yeah. In Latin, too. I'm sure if Mr. Kenevy were still living, he would get a kick out of this because I can remember his strict manner of uh, teaching Latin because you had to focus, could not wander, the mind had to focus, and right. he was tough, and very few people missed the class, and everybody uh, loved him for that, uh, because Mike was very proficient in English, as, you know, later becoming an author. Now, for you at uh, uh, Wilkes University, four-year basketball player, 
amazing record of your team. I looked up the records, 89 wins, 22 losses. Almost uh, 22 wins a year, uh, five losses. Fantastic record. And yeah. two great years where you went beyond the regular season schedule. Well, it was it was something that, um, you know, we, we kind of hit the ground running. When, when Coach Rickroll got the job, I became his first recruit. And uh, in the first two years, I think we were we were 16 and 9, and we got you know started. And the next year, we were 20 and 6, and then from there, 25 and 5, and 28 and 2. And you know, it's just something as we look back now. Um, you know, added a lot of great players, uh, great chemistry. You know, a team about you know defense and toughness. And I thought we were able to achieve uh, you know some good things in the NCAA tournament. And, you know, in our profession, that's kind of how you define is you know your your. Uh, I want to say how you advance in March, you know, in your success in March, and, and we were able to, you know, go to the Elite Eight two years in a row and put that kind of program on, on the map, and, and something that, you know, to this day is, 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 you know, very proud of, and you see some of the banners when you go back there, um, and that's, uh, you know, something I think Coach Rick Rode has always instilled in me. Well, that's great, uh, with reason, too, to be proud. You played four years there, right? I did. Yeah, yeah. That, that's and you were the point guard. Everywhere. I was. Now, I was just kind of a, you know, somebody who got the ball to people out there. We had some great players, a couple All-Americans. Matter of fact, one of my roommates from college just came down and uh, to Virginia Beach, and we, and we uh, had a little get-together with families and talked about some of those days. And, you know, that's always good to look back and see what we were able to do. But, you know, we were... We're very proud of being colonels, as we were of growing up being Blue Raiders. You know? right. Athletes never forget. We said that a few moments ago. Right. No matter what level, no matter what age, that's great. Now, uh, as I said, you took your uh, degree in history in '96. Then you were a graduate assistant great. at Bro. the college. Coach Rick wrote, um, and I just you know, had a great relationship. He knew my passion for getting into coaching and he had an opening on his staff. It was a graduate position and he offered me the job and, and uh, you know, I'd never looked back. It was something I just, you know, dove in um, and made that commitment. And I just, uh, you know, very fortunate to have that opportunity that he kept me around and I uh, was able to learn a lot from him and, and, you know, have a lot of good success under him for, for two more years. And that kind of, you know, helped me uh, grow in this profession. And, uh, you know, it's not, it's not easy in this profession. And sometimes you got to learn the hard way. And, and I did that. But, uh, you know, we kind of got through everything. And, you know, it's, it's helped me become, uh, you know, a head coach today. And in 98, 1998, you uh, received your master's degree. I did. As a graduate assistant coaching basketball and still furthering your education. That's terrific. Now... We swing from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania to Norfolk, Virginia. Yeah, How it. did that happen? Well, Coach Rick Road and Coach Butterfield were friends. And, and in our profession, it's, it's all about networking. And, you know, I think uh, he, Coach Butterfield was the head coach of Virginia Wesleyan College at the time, and he was losing his full-time assistant. And we were coming off a run to the Final Four at Wilkes. It was a fantastic year. The college had never advanced that far. And uh, we just happened to play the Final Four, as we do every year, in Salem, Virginia. And I was able to go down there and, and meet Coach Butterfield, and he came to the game. And I ended up uh, getting an interview with him and, and uh, landing on his staff. And it was just, you know, right place, right time, having some success, and just a good career move. But, you know, I had certainly never been to Virginia. I didn't know how to pronounce a lot of the cities. It was a whole new experience for me coming from northeast Pennsylvania and obviously from, from Massachusetts before that. So, uh, you know, it, it, it took a while to, to learn and, uh, you know, get comfortable. And then, you know, things kind of picked up after that. So you spent the first two years as an assistant. I did. With the program. And then the magic year was, what, 2001? Yeah, 2000, 2001, when Coach Butterfield, uh, you know, got a job in Texas, um, I was able to, uh, you know, be thought of uh, highly enough to, to get an interview at, at 26 years old for the head position. Wow, that's um, terrific. And I was just, again, right place, right time, very fortunate to have that opportunity and, you know, that the administration and athletic director thought that, that you know, I was doing a pretty good job and I they took a chance and our college president took a big chance in hiring a young 26 
year old who, who thought he knew it all and had a, <laughs> had a long way to go and, and uh, just, uh, you know, uh, gave me his vote of confidence. And uh, I just, you know, thought the only thing that I had going for me at that time was to try to outwork everyone in sight. And that's what I tried to do and made some mistakes, but eventually, you know, turned it into some success. Well, in Division Three, you are ranked as uh, percentage-wise the number one coach in the nation. Well, I don't know 76 about that. 76% uh, winning, uh, unbelievable. And I'm just going to check the uh, records here. 13 years coaching at uh, Virginia Wesleyan College, a record, overall record, 290 wins, 93 losses. 75.7 or 76 percent were winning and then in the league the uh, old uh, Dominion Athletic Conference uh, again 76.4 and the record there 179 and 55 but actually it's the love of the game and the ability to teach the, the players the meaning of team and the fundamentals of the game and also uh, recruiting. Right. We have a video of your, you know, your college, Virginia Wesleyan, which has been on the web, on the internet, and it describes the university and why students should apply there and be interested not only in becoming students but also basketball. So. We're going to show that to our viewers and hope that uh, in New England here in the Northeast you get a couple <laughs> of players who will enroll. So we'll take a look at that video now. We're here with Dave Macedo, head men's basketball coach here at Virginia Wesleyan College. Tell us a little bit about your program and uh, what it's been like as far as this journey goes and what, it's, you know, what future recruits uh, could look forward to playing for you here at Virginia Wesleyan. Well, Virginia Wesleyan... Uh, has, has been very good to us and entering my 13th season now um, it's just a special place and it's a place that we call home it's a place that we take a lot of pride in being a Marlin and it's something that we uh, you know we're just very grateful for my wife and I and my family um, there's no place we'd rather be we came here with the idea to make Virginia Wesleyan into a great job and we, we've certainly been able to do that and make strides towards that um, the school is just an outstanding institution. It's an outstanding place to spend four years. We've been able to attract a, a higher level talent, uh, kids and student athletes that take their education serious, and uh, kids that want to win and play and compete for championships. And, and those are the kind of kids that are team oriented, that come here with a passion to be Marlins, that the kids we just want to coach. Um, it's been a lot of fun, the process of getting better and enjoying the journey. It's just something that we, we, we really are fortunate. We've, we've had some great people around us, uh, from the assistant coaches down to the players we have now, to the administration, the faculty and staff. And I think that's one thing that Virginia Wesleyan, uh, you know, just is, is so special because of the people and the people that, you know, all come together and, and make it a unique place. Uh, so I would say, why Virginia Wesleyan? I would say, one, being the small setting in a big area, the f facilities, the Batten Center is one of the nicest facilities. What a home court advantage it plays um, for us. We've had tremendous success at home. I would say that uh, the chance to play and compete for championships and add on to the tradition that's been laid down, uh, there's a great foundation there. And the fact that uh, year in and year out, we play in the best conference in the country, in the Old Dominion Athletic Conference. It speaks volumes, the, the higher level basketball that you see. Um, those all play such key ing uh, ingredients to, to selling our program. And I think our guys have become some of the best recruiters in the country because they want to play with other great players. And I think you see that more often than not now. Great players want to play with other great players. And that's what we've been able to attract. Team-oriented, unselfish guys that care about winning and playing a, a great style of basketball. As far as, I would say, uh, our, our program, the direction it's heading right now, uh, well, we want to just keep up in the end. We want to keep climbing the ladder. And once we've climbed the ladder, I think the biggest thing is maintaining that consistency. 
And for us, it starts with our leadership, our seniors, then our junior class, and you know, so on. Uh, and I think we got guys that just are guys we want relationships with, that we spend a ton of time with talking about the future, talking about uh, our program, or talking about, you know, school, and just getting to know them in a one-on-one -on -one setting so that long after when they leave here, they're better people. And it's our job to make them grow as a person, as a player, and, and just become successful. And, and those kind of kids we've been able to attract and have come through and have tasted success and hopefully have gone away with a lifetime full of memories. Um, but we want to make sure that, that we stay hungry and that we're coaching a hungry basketball team this year, that we have guys that have an unbelievable work ethic and we expect them to work unbelievably hard and that just, just want to keep getting better throughout the year. Uh, for us, that's fun. For us, coaching guys that are all about the team and want to win and are, are ready to earn it, that, that's what we want to be about here. And we want to be everyone's biggest game on, on the schedule. And a lot of times we are. And, and being ranked number one right now, I, I think we've just been able to take that in stride. Uh, it's something that's happened before, and we want to see it continue to happen. We like being on top, but we know it's going to take an awful lot of hard work to stay there. So. When you're looking at our program from the outside in, I would say that the, the consistency, the recognition, the players, the staff, everything goes into making a, a, a winning team. And, and for us, that's what we want to be about. And, and we've been able to pack it at home games and what a fan base and what a following because of that. And we're just very grateful for the fact, and, and we know it's a privilege to play men's basketball here, and hopefully we're just getting started. But uh, if you're looking for a place to play and compete for four years and get a great degree and be around special people, um, I can tell you Virginia Wesley is a place that, uh, you know, is going to offer that kind of opportunity. Well, that was terrific, Dave. You did a great job. You're a great spokesman for the college. Great ambassador. Well, I hope so. Just as you've been for Somerset, a loyal son of Somerset, even though we haven't seen you in 22 years, we still feel that you're part of our community, and by being here today sort of uh, accentuates that. Uh, at uh, Virginia Wesleyan, uh, there, uh, one year in particular, you were the national champion. Was it 2006? Yes. Check yes. my records. Could you tell us a little bit about 2006? Sure. Well, 2006 was just, uh, you know, I think a year it just all came together. We had uh, the right players, the right kind of kids, uh, great toughness, um, kids that I think, uh, you know, persevered and handled adversity real well. And, uh, you know, we just won a lot of close games and put ourselves in a position to achieve success. And, you know, we had kind of set the blueprint in place, um, having tasted the NCAA tournament the year before. And then we were able to play at home through the NCAA tournament, which at the Division Three level is, is really big and just do a good job of finding a ways to uh, keep winning. And then when you get to the Final Four, you know, anything can happen. And I think we were probably an underdog that year, but we won the first game, beat Illinois Wesleyan uh, by two points at the buzzer. And then, you know, when we played Wittenberg for the national championship, we didn't have to lead the entire game, you know, for, uh, except the last 2.1 seconds on the clock. Uh, we, had, we had run a play and we had hit a three-pointer to take a three-point lead at, at, at that point in time and just say we were able to help, hang on and, and uh, you know, seal the victory and it's just something we'll never forget. You know, out of the 440 teams that compete for a national title every year, you know, to be that last one standing and to, to go out with a, a win and not a loss is something that doesn't happen very often and, and something we'll always remember and I'll always remember that group. And, the, the work that they put forth and the closeness they had um, to this day, you know, and, and they're just big parts of, of the face of our program and our college. Well, I know the uh, conference has selected you as the coach of the year on five or six different occasions out of the 13 years you've coached uh -huh. there, and that's a tribute to you and your teaching of the game and also your players who have that respect and admiration for you. They want to achieve 
you know, for you and for the school. Well, you're right. I, I think it's all about relationships at our level, and we try to recruit winning guys. We call them guys that are serious about their academics, uh, the guys that have good character, but, you know, guys that can also play the game. And, you know, we say play hard, play smart, and think team. And we got a bunch of guys that think team, and the players are kind of the engine behind everything. And, you know, my job's kind of to put them in certain places so, you know, that's to not screw them up and make them, you know, play to their strengths. And then we have some great assistant coaches, and I've been very fortunate to surround myself with some great people. Um, and it's no different today. And, and, you know, we just continue to be excited about, you know, coaching there and in the future. Now, you and your family will leave shortly to go back to uh, Virginia, to sure. Norfolk, Virginia. What is the future uh, during the summer? You run some camps? I do. It, it, you know, it's a 24, you know, 7, kind of 365 day a year kind of job that you just kind of do, do what you need to do. Um, but recruiting says, plays such a pivotal role in everything that we do. And July is a big month to get on the road. And we also run some, some camps. We run a team camp with a lot of high school teams. Um, and we have great relationships. We felt um, we made a lot of inroads with high school coaches in the state of Virginia and uh, you know branch that out a little bit but mainly it's in-state recruiting in Virginia that we draw from it's been what we know what's been good to us and there's a you know such a, a wealth of talent down in that area that we're, we're able to draw from that and kind of build a build old fence and not let everyone else in to steal our talent at times and, and hopefully that can continue but it's always a busy time in the summer and uh, you know this this time having this week off uh, you know, it's just something we always look forward to come back home. And, you know, it's just a place that, you know, is very special to us. Well, that's great. Nothing succeeds like success. And <laughs> you certainly have had a lot of success. And 13 years as the head coach, coming up to the 14th, and maybe we can have you back next year for uh, an update on how the Marlins of Virginia Wesleyan fared. And I'm sure they're going to be very good with under your leadership. I want to thank you very, very much for taking the time out of extremely busy schedule to come and visit with us in studio today. All the best of luck to a great son of thank Somerset. Thank you. And Mr. Sousa, thank you for all you do, okay, and for yeah. touching lives, okay? You certainly touched mine. I yeah. appreciate it. You're very kind to say that. So for Dave Macedo and myself, we'll be rounding third and heading home. Thanks for watching, folks. <laughs>